Well, the race is on with only three days to go until Election Day in Virginia. A new Fox News poll finds Republican challenger Glenn Youngkin taking the lead over former Governor Terry McAuliffe, an eight-point lead. This, as the Wall Street Journal op-ed claims, the GOP has an opening in Virginia saying, quote, Youngkin put the suburbs back in play as Democrats leap left. Let's bring in our parent panel to react. Fairfax County, Virginia mom with Parents Defending Education, Azra Nomani. Florida mom with Moms for Liberty, Keisha King. And New York Post columnist and mom of three, Carol Markowitz. Ladies, thank you all so much for being here. Azra, I'll start with you. You're there in Virginia. Uh, is this an opportunity to recapture parents, moms in the suburbs? Wow. So, you know, a lot of people discovered that these moms exist here in the suburbs, here in Virginia, just over the last few weeks. But I'll tell you, this began in the spring of 2020. There was a mama bear revolution that began then. And it was because of things like this, this little book called Woke Baby. They started coming after America's babies in this new activists and educrats that were trying to claim our kids. And so we have moms like Helen Miller, who wrote a letter in June 2020 that said she was hopping mad, and Suparna Dutta, who is now you know, speaking to the school board for the first time ever. Pete, it's a revolution right now that's happening in America, and it's absolutely going to define the, elect the election on Tuesday. Yeah, we, we will be watching. Carol, you know, there's another election in New Jersey, a governor's race that's a lot tighter uh, than people anticipated it would be. Do, do you think this is a movement that extends beyond, say, swing states and independents and suburbs into, into more blue areas where parents still want that kind of control? Well, it's funny, like Astra, I think this movement began during the pandemic when parents realized that their kids weren't really learning very much in school. I had so many parents reach out to me saying, like, when do they cover math and science and history and, you know, the rest of it when they're learning about all these woke concepts like, you know, critical race theory and uh, gender issues and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I think my, my big issue throughout this whole time has been that the Republicans had not capitalized it on it. Um, the Biden administration at this point yes. is taking credit for opening schools when everybody knows that they stood in the way of schools opening. So I'd love to see Republicans all over the country capitalize on the idea that, you know, it's not a radical concept. Parents care what their kids learn in school, and they should absolutely run on it in all the states. Absolutely. Keisha, you know, let's say Virginia does go Glenn Youngkin's way. Uh, let's say there's an electoral backlash. Do you think Democrats are capable of pulling back the, from the precipice of critical race theory, of all, all the gender theory that's being taught, or are they saddled with this because the educational bureaucracy is so captured? Um, Pete, I think they are saddled with this. Um, we can see that the Democrats have never been on the side of school choice. They have never been on the side of parents, and they really have dug their heels in on this issue. So, yeah, I think they have to own it. And I think parents will continue to stand up regardless of what side you are on politically because everyone knows that the best uh, – indicator of a child's educational outcome is when parents are involved. And so Democrats have put themselves in a corner where they have to live with that decision. And I think that Virginia and other states around the country are going to show that parents want to be involved. Azra, are we, you're there in Virginia. Are, are we seeing actual changes at the school board level and classroom level? We've seen parents stand up. We've seen the, the, the government attempt to classify you as domestic terrorists. Do you believe it will translate into changes in the classroom? Well, Pete, that's what's so disturbing about this. I mean, it's just like Keisha and Carol said, parents are expressing very serious concerns about curriculum, about classrooms. You know, this tragedy of the sexual, mis the sexual assault yes. in uh, Loudoun County. But unfortunately, what parents are facing is a big cover-up. You know, and unfortunately, just like Keisha said, the activists and the educrats are doubling down in their agenda. And so right now, for example, we see them spending millions of COVID dollars on social and emotional learning surveys that are basically just Trojan horses for the entry of these controversial activist ideas. And so they need to really have a, um, a, a, a kind of conversation with themselves about the future that they want to have in our schools because you know these mama bears aren't going anywhere mm -hmm. and so would they need to really adjust their relationship with the parents because they are right now silencing parents. Carol a lot of this is about parental. But we're speaking up. Well, and good for you. 
Uh, Carol, a lot of this is about parental prerogative and choice. And we just saw mm -hmm. an emergency uh, authorization of vaccines for kids as young as five. Is that the next yeah. chapter of this as parents are confronted with potential mandates for their kids just to go to school? Well, that is coming. Um, California had already announced it. I've heard from a number of private schools around New York that they're already announcing it, even though the vaccines aren't out yet. I think a lot of this is who do your kids belong to? Do the kids belong to the system or do they belong to you? And I think parents need to recognize that this fight is coming. I think the idea that it's just about school boards or it's just about CRT is is narrow. This is a, I mean, the, the CRT thing is obviously a giant problem, but it's really, it's a widespread wokeness throughout the system system where they don't believe that the kids are yours and they believe that they can do whatever they want with your children and whether parents understand that is really what, what's going to be kind of the issue going forward in the next year plus. Mm. Um, this is all new, this the, this uprising from parents and I hope they get that this is not going to be a short thing. This, this is going to be ongoing and there's going to be a lot of factors. It's not just schools, it's not just one topic. Amen. Uh, Keisha, last word. I definitely agree with uh, both Azra and Carol. Um, I think teachers, school boards, administrations, they need to realize that they need to get out of the healthcare business and leave our children alone and let parents decide what is best for their children. Um, I think if they continue to push through with these mandates for young children, they are going to see even more parents get very uh, involved in our movement. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you this, Azra, Carol, and Keisha, as you were talking, Will and Rachel's heads were nodding the entire time. Uh, you all three are very, very impressive, and you give us a lot of hope. Uh, grateful for you joining Thank us you. this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone have hope. Amen.